Afghanistan is a place that is seemingly permanently stuck in time. The people that live there have been living fundamentally the same way for thousands of years. The only thing that has changed in Afghanistan is the fact that they have AKs and surface-to-air missiles. Other than that, they've been living essentially the same way for a very long time. It's a place where you can go to see a little bit of the old world. And as we learned in, here in the United States, and as the Soviets and British and countless other dead empires learned before us, there is no changing them, no matter how many bombs you drop on their villages. Another piece of proof that Afghanistan will remain to be stuck in time is the presence of giants in its mountains. I know that sounds crazy, but giants are a human universal. There are stories of giants from just about every culture stretching back thousands of years. Everywhere from Easter Island to North America to the Levant to, of course, Asia. Giants continue to be a part of human mythology, religion, and culture. However, what we don't hear about very often is encounters in the modern day with giants. That was until a SEAL team went missing in the mountains of Kandahar in the year 2002. What was so unbelievably weird about this is that at no point did the missing SEAL team contact headquarters and say that they were being attacked or that they were under fire. Usually, from what I've gathered talking to former servicemen, they would call in that they were being attacked preemptively, just so headquarters could get anything ready that they needed to to support the troops. The fact that they just went dead silent was incredibly concerning. So, another SEAL team was sent into the mountains to find them and figure out what happened. The SEAL team that was deployed to find the missing team did find something incredibly concerning. After hours of hiking up and down the hills and valleys of the mountains, they did come across what looked like an ambush site, and they found the remains of the missing SEAL team. They found tattered and broken uniforms and equipment scattered about, broken, and blood everywhere. But the strangest thing that they found was that the radio was completely intact. It is standard military protocol throughout all three branches, as far as I can tell, to destroy or save the radio at all costs. The radio in modern warfare is more important than any assault rifle, and if a radio fell into the hands of the Taliban, that would be way more valuable than any M4 or Aimpoint Pro that they would find on our servicemen's carbines. So the fact that it was completely intact was very weird. While investigating the site, they noticed that there was a set of very clean stairs going up the right side of the mountain. As they started going up the stairs to investigate further and maybe find some surviving Navy SEALs, they located a cave. A young SEAL stepped foot into the cave armed with nothing but his M4 carbine, and he was immediately stabbed with a 13-foot long spear. A giant, red-headed man with a beard that smelled like death and was covered in leather clothing stabbed the Navy SEAL right through his armor plating, and he died basically immediately. At this very instant, the rest of the SEALs opened fire with M4 carbines and a single Barrett 50 caliber semi-automatic rifle. As quickly as it started, the giant died. It took a total of 37 shots. And in the middle of this firefight, it was moving incredibly quickly, especially for something of this size. It was intimidating. It was kind of amazing they were able to land anything at all. I can only imagine how terrified I would be if I was just in a cave looking for my friends and then suddenly got ambushed by something I didn't even know existed. It was horrible what had happened. A serviceman had died to a being that didn't even officially exist. As they were waiting for the Chinook helicopter, they took note of what this creature exactly was. Sure, it looked a lot like a person, but there were some very noticeable differences. They first observed that it had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, much like the giants in the Bible and the ones described by North American Indians. It also had two rows of teeth, like a freaking shark. Now, this is a new one. I have not seen this repeated in any other giant stories from mythology, but I, for all I know, they could be there. Nonetheless, it is an incredibly interesting, if not horrifically terrifying, detail. Now, for a long time, this is where the story ended. The giant was carried off in a Chinook, and it was never seen again. However, obviously, it had to get back to the United States somehow. Once it arrived at the Air Force Base in Kandahar, it was loaded onto a C-130. 
The pilot who came forward and gave an interview said that it smelled like something that hadn't showered in 10 years, which honestly isn't that surprising. He also corroborated all the same details. It had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. He also gave a very interesting metric though. He said that the giant weighed 1,200 pounds, and when you're flying a cargo plane, it's easy for me to see why he would know that. I'm sure he was relayed how much his cargo would weigh. So, we can actually use this and use some science and some math and corroborate this number and see if that's actually how much a giant like this would weigh. We can use the square cube law to see if this weight of 1,200 pounds checks out for a humanoid that is 13 feet tall. Essentially, if something doubles its surface area, its volume has to increase by three times. So instead of doing all that math myself, I'm gonna go ask our favorite antichrist chat GPT if it can spit out the numbers for me. I'm also going to ask it to take into account body mass index, which you might argue for a person if we're trying to figure out how much a 13 foot tall person would weigh, that might be a more accurate measurement. The results were super interesting. According to the square cube law calculator, a 13 foot tall person could weigh as much as 1,884 pounds, which is significantly heavier than the giant of Kandahar. However, using a body mass index calculator, the giant of Kandahar would have weighed something like 772 pounds. Now we're gonna have to take a little bit of a logical leap here, so I hope you're willing to go here with me. But I think it's reasonable to conclude that the true weight of a 13 foot tall humanoid is probably somewhere between these two numbers. So if we look at the midpoint number between these two, it's 1,328, which is only just a little bit heavier than the alleged giant of Kandahar, but it gets even better. At any given point in time, blood is going to make up anywhere between 8 to 10% of a person's body weight. As we know from the story, the Kandahar giant was shot about three dozen times, so we can assume all of the blood at this point is gone. If we reduce this number by 10%, we get 1,195.2. Now, I'm going to call that a victory and a home run for the alleged pilot that transported the Kandahar giant. If he was just pulling a number out of his butt, man, did he get very, very lucky. Well, is the story of the Kandahar giant true? Well, there's no way to know one way or the other definitively, right? As with all good stories. But we can look at what detractors of the story have to say, and we can look at what proponents of the story have to say, and we can make a conclusion for ourselves on whether or not we think it's likely that the story actually happened. Let's look at the detractors first. If you go to Military Times, Cryptid Wikipedia, and Snopes, they will all say that this didn't happen. Why? They say because the Pentagon said it didn't happen. Now, you don't have to believe this story. I don't blame you if you don't believe this story. But if you don't believe the story because the Pentagon said not to believe this story, you are out of your mind, especially after the UAP hearings. Give me a break. Just because the Defense Department says something isn't true, honestly, that makes it more likely to be true at this point, not less. So that's a very stupid reason to not believe this story. A much more simple argument against the story is that giants aren't real. Which, sure, that's valid. If you live in a city and you work at a university in a little crammed office, it's hard to imagine that there's anywhere left on the planet where a giant could live without being detected. But go ask the people who live in Kandahar province. Go ask the people who herd their sheep in those mountains. They will tell you that the giants are real and that they have to be very wary of them. Go ask members of our military who served in the remote provinces of Afghanistan. They will tell you that they heard all sorts of hushed whispers and rumors of something in those mountains that killed those Navy SEALs that day. Go ask the people who lived on this continent for thousands of years undisturbed. Go ask the people of the Bible. Go ask the people of Easter Island whether the story is possible, and you'll get a very different answer. Anyway, guys, I hope I gave you something to chew on. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If you like the video, please like, share, and of course, subscribe. Have a good one.